How much financing does your business need? Many small businesses that have approached me to be their interim or part-time CFO in the past when I delivered those services, um, approached me to help them locate funding for their businesses. And when I would ask them how much they needed, they typically had no idea. Um, they would put forth a number that basically had no basis because when I asked them how did they arrive at that number, it would be a guesstimate, sometimes a bit of an educated guess, <laughs> um, or they, uh, they used these broad-based estimates, but that had actually little to do with um, quantitative, anal quanti quantitative analysis, essentially zero quantitative analysis. And let me just be clear, my clients are companies that have three million or more in revenue. So we're not talking about startups where, you know, you're making all these assumptions <laughs> and you basically have to go with the best guess estimate. You can forecast out the wazoo, but it's still just a really good estimate. No, these were companies with at least 3 million in revenue. So they had strong historical financial statements and they knew what they wanted to do, but they had not taken the time to figure out how much what they wanted to do would cost in the timing of that. So let me say to you, consider how much funding you need from an investor or lender perspective. Think about that. So if you don't know what you really need, how much you really need and why you need it, you'll find it very difficult to obtain the financing. If you don't know the answers to those questions, then, um, then, you, kinda, then you lose your credibility. Um, so, I mean, think about it. You're talking to a lender or you're talking to an investor and they say, well, why do you need the $100,000? Well, for working capital. Oh, okay. For what working capital? Mm, well, uh, we're going to increase our, our inventory and our receivables are a little slow and, uh, you know, working capital. <laughs> you tell me if that sounds very convincing <laughs> i would take i would i would uh i would proffer that the answer is no so you know the questions are how much do you need now how much do you need later what is later is it 6 months a year 3 years why do you need it and what will you use the money for if i am an investor or a lender and you don't know the answer to some of these questions, then here would be my thoughts. Why would I lend you money when you can't articulate the basics? Why would I invest on a hunch? I thought I was investing in a growing business. Why does this business owner not understand their business? So how do you determine your basic financing need? Most small to medium businesses have controllers. These are small to medium businesses, typically five to 7 million and up have controllers. Lower than, with revenue less than that, they typically have bookkeepers and then they'll have an accountant that comes in once a month to do the general ledger and, and balance the books. So um, again, this is like 3 million to, to to 7 million. So, and like I said, some, some don't have that. Um, so accountants, but even with that accountants look at historical data and finance professionals like me look at strategy and what will occur in the future. So I'll take the historical data and think about what are the company's goals and objectives? What's the strategy? strategy to achieve those goals and objectives. And so how much money do I need to help you, um, 
to help you as a company or help us if I'm an employee um, accomplish those objectives. So to determine how much you need, you have to look at the amount of money it took your company to reach its current position and then determine what extra you want to do to grow your company. Yes, I'm, um, I'm, this is an article that I previously wrote, so I'm just re referring to that. <laughs> it's a long video to do without looking at anything. And so if you hired three people to do X and now you need to hire four more, then basically, you know, it's going to cost the same. It's pretty much going to cost the same. It's going to cost. So if it took you a hundred, let's say a hundred thousand dollars for three people, that may be kind of low, but let's just, let's just, so if it took you a hundred thousand dollars to hire three people and you need to hire four people in a similar situation, similar scenario, then it's probably going to take you 133,000, um, not including recruiting costs and so on. Now, or do you need to pay more in today's market? Were those customer service personnel and now you need to hire IT techs or marketing personnel who may need fifty to sixty thousand dollars a year in salary? These are the things you need to con need to consider, and that will determine how much money you need. So some some accountants have financial acumen and can do this, and some don't. So if your accountant or controller can't do this, it's imperative that you find someone who can. A friend who is a financial professional, a banker, your banker, that's only if you have a great relationship. But if you have a great relationship where you kind of like sit down, <laughs> sit down, go and have an occasional sit down or lunch with your banker, then by all means, reach out to your banker. You can use the SBDC, that's a Small Business Development Center. They're all over the country, um, multiple ones in each state, and uh, sometimes in a larger metropolitan area, there may be three or four or even more. Uh, or you could engage an interim CFO like me to assist you. So the next step is to create a financial projection to help determine the amount. So as I've told several companies, I highly recommend that you create a more detailed net income projection for one to one and a half years. That's 12 to 18 months. This is, this is for regular um, financing or funding. Now, if you're looking at capital expenditures, so you intend to open up another location in two or three years, you intend to acquire a building or you intend to build out a building in the next two to three years, those are capital expenditures. And so of course, then your time frame needs to be greater. Anyways, this will enable you to determine how much money you'll spend on production, depending on, you know, what kind of company you are, production or service delivery, personnel, packaging, marketing, etc., and when those monies will be spent. So again, it's timing because anything under 12 months is considered current or short term and anything over 12 months is considered long term. If you need money for, um, you know, to, to cover the gaps in payments between the time that you send out your invoices and the time you get your money in or to cover inventory um, or other short term needs, then that's working capital and you essentially need a line of credit and you, the focus is on determining how much, what size of, of the line of credit do you need? And as you grow, that line of credit will probably need to grow depending on how fast you're growing. So if this year you did 3 million and next year you did 5 million, you're going to need to increase your line of credit. Um, if you need to buy equipment or you need to hire uh, a large number of people in the future, um, then you'll need to, or you need um, 
to acquire a building, do a build out. All of those are capital expenditures. You're with a longer term horizon. So you'll need to look at a term loan. So for equipment, a term loan is typically equipment loans, term loans, five years, um, three to five years. If you use, if you're a factory and you have very large equipment, then it may be 10 years. If you're buying a building, it be 20 years, uh, a 20 year term loan. But you see what I mean? You have to align your timing of the money that you need with the, with the type of loan that you pursue. And so then you want to determine any cash flow shortages. So are there any cash flow shortages in there that you hadn't previously considered? You need to, so in addition to what you need, where in the past have you had cash for cash flow shortages? And so you want to look, look at that and see if you can get financing that can help you cover those gaps. Um, those because some of those gaps could be unforeseen, but based on the past, um, if you had gaps in the past, you're likely going to have them in the future. Um, although you can strengthen your operations and so on to drive more cash flow, but that's a discussion for another day. Right now, we're talking about financing, which shows up on the balance sheet, uh, not on the balance sheet, on the um, uh, well, actually, it shows up on the balance sheet as a as a liability or as equity, depending on if you're getting a loan or equity or whatever. But if you are, um, I'm talking about the cash flow statement. So there's operational financing and investment cash flow. So right now we're talking about financing cash flow. Um, so anyways, if you do all of this, then you'll have planned well in advance um, regarding the types of funding that you need and you can go out and procure that funding before you absolutely need it. I am Tiffany C. Wright, the Resourceful CEO. Mm -hmm.